Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good. Welcome, everybody who's online, wherever you are this morning, whether you're lying at home and dad having a, a breakfast in bed, or whether you're at a caravan, a holiday home, a motor home, or wherever you may be, you are very welcome joining us online this morning um, as well. Um, how many kids are in the room right now? If you're under 12, everybody raise their hand quickly. There's a couple. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do something as we kick off this morning. What day is it today? Is it Father's Day? Yes. How loud can you scream about how great your dad is? If I count one, two, three, will you do a huge big scream for me? He's going to scream for me, yeah? Give a big cheer for your daddies. We're going to go here, right? One, two, three. Wow. There's not too much excitement about the dads and Lurgan this morning. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go again. Maybe the mummies could help a wee bit as well. One, two, this is a scream for those dads, three, well, it is 9.31, we'll give you that as an excuse this morning, but uh, here, um, you're really welcome in Emmanuel this morning and joining us for worship, why don't we stand our feet this morning? I did that for a reason, because, uh, you know, it is Father's Day. We'll talk about that in a wee moment or two. But the Father, who is exemplar in love, who is exemplar in patience, who is exemplar in guiding, is the reason we've gathered here this morning. And uh, as our kids have screamed and their mums have helped them for the dads this morning, I just want to say to you, this is your opportunity in worship to sing a love song to the Father in heaven that loves you. So I'm asking you this morning, with all that you have, every breath that's in you, your energy and your enthusiasm, raise a shout, raise a voice, Raise a thank you, raise a praise to our Father in heaven as we join with the gays this morning in worship. Come on, church, let's worship a wonderful Father this morning.
answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you were providing and you are providing now you are the same god you are the same Just uh, let's just maybe pray for one second. And the words of the song that we've just sang, we just want to say, Oh God, our God, Father God, we just say thank you afresh this morning for the Father that you are. This morning, Holy Spirit, just in each of us just stir, stir all the things that are all your attributes, Father God, that we have witnessed and experienced in our own lives and help us turn those back to praise to you this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your plan of salvation for those of us that know you and love you. We thank you for your healing for those of us that have experienced and have felt your touch of healing on our bodies. We thank you, Father God, for those of us that you have granted patience and endurance to tarry with sickness or affliction on our body. We thank you, Father God, for the provision and blessing that many of us experienced in our lives. We thank you, Father God, for the blessing of children, for those of us that have been blessed with that. So afresh this morning, in a, in a day where t-shirts and chocolates and socks and whatever is gifted or bought to recognize a father in a household, we just say afresh in our household this morning, Father God, thank you. Thank you afresh. In Jesus' name, and the church say, Amen. Just, we're just going to um, sort of take your seats for a moment. The guys will, will come back with a worship song in a few moments. But we're, we're going to move on into a, a, in our service flow where we do communion in the middle of worship. But before we do communion this morning, we just wanted to take a moment and just focus on, on fathers and dads in our room. 
And we know that that is a whole mixed emotion um, for many of us. You know, um, uh, my, my dad died 10 years ago, and um, the, the pain is a lot less, um, but it, it converts into thinking of all of the good memories, and today is a celebration of that. So we're conscious that in the room there is people who have lost their dad in recent months. Um, I'm thinking even a Johnny there and, and others in this room who have lost their dad, and it's really fresh and sore. Um, but I'm thinking of others that you're missing your dads this morning too. I'm also conscious that maybe dads are absent for many reasons, whether relationship issues, work issues, other whole host of reasons that a dad is missing from the row or from the household at this moment in time. So we're conscious of that. And there may be a role model or another person who's like a dad with you here today or that you know in your household and we can celebrate them as well today. Uh, and then as well, we're also recognizing the fact that as much as we celebrate the great dads in the room, some of you wince and are feeling a bit all twisted inside because you haven't had a great experience with your dad and you can't relate to that. And we, we want to pray for that as well this morning in this moment. So I hope you all got um, your little uh, prayer card. Maddie's going to be coming up in a minute and reading this to us. Come on up, Maddie, now, and that you got your chocolates. I seen a few dads in the rows there just before service fighting to hold on to their box of sweets from their kids. Um, so, you know, when, when we come around communion and we think about the sacrifice of Father God by giving his son, um, you maybe relate to the sacrifice of giving your sweets away on the way home in the car. Um, but, um, yeah, not. I'm not demeaning the sacrifice of Father God, of His Son, Jesus, okay. Um, but yeah, Father's Day. Maddie, come on and read, and then we'll pray for the dads. Dear daddies, there has never been a better day to tell you that you're loved in a hundred little ways. Your kindness and strength aren't taken for granted, your, and your love helps little kids grow right where they're planted. Dear dads, we know that you come in all shapes and sizes. You light up our lives and broaden our horizons. You're the ones we turn to when life gets upended, and we trust you completely when hearts need mended. Dear papas, do you worry in case your best won't be enough? Do you feel constant pressure to be tenacious and tough? We're here to remind you that you're wonderful as you are. We love you so much, dad. We all think you're stars. So dear fathers, dear stepdads, dear adopters, dear sons, dear childless, dear longing, dear broken-hearted ones, dear son of a great dad, dear child of one who left, dear alienated, dear waiting, dear bewildered, dear bereft. It's our prayer for you all on this special Father's Day that you'll feel the touch of heaven in a, a new and lovely way. So believe us when we tell you that you're li a living work of art, for great daddies are reflections of a heavenly father's heart. Thank you, Maddie, and I'd encourage you all just to take your wee card and reflect on that this afternoon or even later this evening. And just as we do that, you know, we did this at this time because the boys and girls were all going to be in and the young people were going to be in. So if there's a dad around you, we're all going to pray now. And I would love that, you know, kids, if you would like to go and lay your hand on your dad, um, there's Dave going to his dad, so there's no age restriction to this at all. But we want kids to go and lay their hands on their dad in an act of just praying with them and praying for them. And I'm going to pray now. So let's all bow our heads and close our eyes as we think about our dads. Father, we just thank you that you designed and th thought through a wonderful principle of being a father. And we thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity in whatever way that looks in our world to step that out. So this morning, Lord, we just say thank you for all of the fathers in the room. We also ask you, Father, that you just resurge wonderful memories, Holy Spirit, of the dads that aren't in our lives right now. And we ask you, Lord, that in that blossoming of wonderful memories, any pain may be set aside and eased. 
but for the dollies that are in the room, Lord, and as the kids and people pray with them just now in this room, we say, Father, would you come by the power of your Holy Spirit in these days and in this age that you would empower these dads to be a great father and a great leader in their home. We ask you, Lord, that they would have eyes to see and ears to hear things that you reveal to them that their kids need guidance in. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would give patience and tolerance and wisdom as small kids grow to teenagers and help each dad navigate the different seasons in life. But right now, Lord, we say thank you for the fathers in this room and we celebrate them today and we say come Holy Spirit and refresh and renew them this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say amen. Great, great. And as part of the celebration of dads, at the front of the room and at the back of the room, there's tables this morning. And that's communion. That is the way that the Father left for us to remember the sacrifice of Jesus for each one of our sins. So this morning, we want to use the communion table as a celebration of, of a sacrifice of a father sending his son so that you and I could find a way back to the Father through Jesus Christ. So this morning, we have the little cups of juice which remind us of the spilled blood of Jesus to cover my sin and to cover your sin. And we also have the, the little port bits of cracker which are a reminder of the broken body of Jesus for us. So if you know Jesus this morning as your Lord and Savior, if you're walking with him, if you've explained what this is to your kids, we have an open table and we say, come and celebrate the love of a father through the love of a son for you and I. And let's reflect and think on that deep love for us this morning. Is that okay? So the band are just going to do some music and then we come back into worship after that. But I'm just going to pray now and then we can, the parents and the kids can come forward first and then they'll go to kids church and then the rest of us just will have a time of reflection and back into worship. So Father, we just thank you that we have a table and a feast of remembrance which weekly draws us back to the sacrifice you made by the suffering of your son Jesus on the cross for me and for each one of us. So afresh this morning, Lord, we say thank you. And would you take these emblems of remembrance and would you help us in our moments focus on you and help us just celebrate afresh how wonderful you are, Father God. Amen.
Sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Sing your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all, all thrones and dominions, all bars and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, You will love. 
Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that as humans, we will, whether men or women, we will let people or we will let you down. But you, Father God, will always be. And we lift you up, Jesus, and we celebrate you this morning and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the example of a wonderful son. Thank you, Father, for an example of a wonderful father. We thank you for our worship this morning, Lord. We thank you for the songs that we are able to sing. And we ask you, Lord, would you just take this offering of worship and may it be sweet from each of us individually this morning, raising to you in gratitude and thankfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Steve, is, 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 your, is your dad in this service, is he? So, so I can name and shame you to say then that at, at practice this morning, you just figured out for the first time it was Father's Day. <laughs> oh, you bought a card? Oh. Woo! <laughs> uh, that would have been real good if, you, if your dad had been in the room, like, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, just on that, I just want to say thank you to Julie Timlin for writing the little uh, <laughs> prayer this morning. As always, Julie is a master wordsmith in the hands of the Father, so uh, thank you, Julie, for that gift to every man in this uh, church family. We appreciate you, and appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just do our uh, announcements now, and as we're doing that, the, the guys will come with the little bags for the tithes and offerings. Um, you know the form if you're around us quite a bit. We are believing giving and being generous. We encourage that. We encourage the tithe and also we encourage gift aiding. Um, so if you are giving and you would like to gift aid, there's the option to sign up for that at the back and it multiplies out what you give. Um, but we thank you for your generosity. We thank you for how what you give helps the church function and the ministries do what they do. We thank you for that. This week, corporate prayer is over in Portadown at 8 o'clock, breaking the soil. I have no doubt this week the soil that will be broken will be the prayers for the upcoming weekend um, down in Newcastle and praying for that. And I think we're also going to be praying for the building um, project over in Portadown and the next phase of that as well. Um, if you don't come along to corporate prayers, we would say, really, why don't you come? Please come at a quarter to eight over to Meadow Lane, just where the old Iceland was, um, and uh, you'll have a cup of tea and coffee, and then we'll kick off at eight, and we're usually finished at a quarter past nine, and we would love you to join with us as a family and pray. Um, it is real special times. This week's happenings are all on the screen. They'll be on the screen afterwards on the rollover. If you get Phil's email, they all come on that, and you'll see them on our social media feed as well. All things are rolling as normal um, still, even though we're heading towards the summer. And if you're not on that email, um, please go down to the connections area at the back and give your details. And uh, some of the team will get you signed up there. Or you can go to the website and join up there and you'll not miss any of the stuff that is actually happening. Next weekend um, is the new um, uh, conference or festival. Um, you know, you've heard all about this um, for weeks from us now. We've been encouraging you to either sign up or allocate next Sunday to come down. Um, so in that, there is no services here in Lurgan um, or in Portadown next Sunday. Um, we are all making our way to Newcastle, and uh, hopefully you'll have all registered for that already. I think you you must have with the numbers that are expected. There's other churches not having. There's churches in Belfast. There's churches in Lisburn. There's other churches all not meeting and all going and trucking towards Newcastle next weekend. What we would say would be is, would you continue to pray as a church for next weekend? It's not a festival for the sake of it and for being trendy and cool because it's what others are doing. It's because there's a hunger to gather with other believers and seek the Lord. So please pray for that and the practicality of that. 
and as well as that, pray that um, these, uh, these showery days stop again and the good weather comes back for next weekend or at least dry. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm assuming that if you do have a camping chair for next Sunday, it will be really good for you to bring that along on the boot of your car. Um, whether it's for the gathering itself or whether it's for hanging around afterwards, I think it would be good. I meant to check that with Tash, but if you've got a camp chair, put it in your boot and bring it with you, okay? Um, and then just, Lou, we're heading in towards summer. Um, we've had a great spell of weather. I hope you've all been enjoying it. The kids' exams are all starting to come to an end. The rain's starting to come back, so that must mean it's summer in Northern Ireland. And uh, here are some of the things that we're going, just wanting to inform you about. In um, July, um, we'll tell you this over the next uh, few weeks so that you're reminded of it, there are no prayer meetings in the middle of the week in July with so many people usually away on holidays. Um, the church offices are going to be closed on the 10th of July that week for the whole week. Um, if you're needing somebody from church, um, you may email in or just leave a message on the answer phone and somebody will get back to you. Um, then, um, as well as that, on the 9th and 16th of July, there will only be one morning service at 10 a.m. Um, it'll be chaotic. It'll be fun. There is no hospitality, um, no teas and coffees and stuff outside on, on those two weeks, nor are there any kids' environments for those two weeks so, um, yep, it'll be fun and crazy, but sure, that's what family's all about. Um, so, yeah, and then finally, we just want you then to think towards um, the 1st of September, not in a way of, oh, no, kids back to school, everything's starting up again. It's more about here. We're going to be doing a fun night. We don't totally know what that looks like as yet, but we want you to save the date on Friday evening of the 1st of September. Would you maybe save that date? So that'll all be coming out in some of the emails, so keep an eye out for that. So that, that's what's coming up over the summer, um, in and around the life of the church, and a lot of the weekly ministries will all go into summer mode as well, but you'll hear about that in the next couple of weeks. Um, also, with it coming to summertime, um, we have loads of our, our people, or quite a few of our people, all heading away on mission trips to all parts of the world, and um, I'm probably going to miss some names out. We have tried to gather all that we know um, that are going out. But if, if we don't say your name and we haven't mentioned it, would you come up to the front afterwards and just say, here, if you don't know, I'm going to such and such. Would you just continue to pray for us? We would love to know that as elders of this church and staff team of this church that we can pray for you as well. Um, so please, would you do that? But yeah. There's many of you all heading away on mission. Um, and I just want us to take as a church family in unity to pray for our young people and our young adults who are heading away. So I'm going to do a whistle-stop tour around parts of Europe and further afield. And if those people are in the room, um, it would be fantastic if you could stand and then we'll get some people to head around and pray for you. So the first stop is Portugal. Um, it's going to be a tough gig for the people who are going to Portugal for the month of July. Um, but uh, that's to a um, mission outreach called Camp Sunshine, which does a series of weekly camps for uh, children and youth um, with a strong evangelical focus for the kids of the Algarve, not just holiday kids, local kids as well. Um, Katie McClegg, who, or Katie Clegg, who comes from this fellowship here, um, she is heavily involved with the organization and the planning for that, so it will be really good to pray for her. But as well as that, this year, going out um, to Camp Sunshine at various times is Ben Stone, who is definitely here somewhere. Yep, he's down at the back. Jack Harvey is uh, going as well. Alan McElwain is also going, and one of our young adults, Matthew Holloway, is heading there too. Um, it must be a real draw because my future son-in-law is going for 10 days, um, 10 days before he gets married. So uh, uh, he likes pressure, so he does, especially when he knows my daughter. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so there's something special about Camp, Camp Sunshine. Um, and Amber was there last year as well and had the privilege of leading two kids to Jesus 
Um, so it is a special time, and um, we're going to pray for Ben, Ellen, Jack, and Matthew. Um, then heading further east um, to Moldova is Leon Vesterhusen. Um, from, he's from Moira. He's a key part of our um, youth and young, and young people around this church. And he is going there with the Exodus team. Um, to minister in Moldova over the summer. So we're going to pray for Leon and also with Exodus, but maybe heading a wee bit, um, not just as far, but certainly as important and with still so many people needing to find Jesus is um, Martha McTurnahan, and she is heading up to Donegal um, in the West um, to be able to minister there with an Exodus team. And then going slightly further um, west, well, a good bit further west, I see her sitting down in the middle here. Her dad's probably going to break out in tears in any minute. But Sir Jane McHugh, who's uh, going to serve for 10 weeks in t outside Toronto, Canada, with Masuka Woods um, Kids Camp over there. Um, so would all of those uh, people or names that I have um, read out, would they maybe uh, stand? And we're going to gather around them and pray for them. Would that be okay, please? Um, let's do that now. I think it's also worthwhile when maybe say, Davy Edwards is here as well. He, no, he was there a month ago. Rosemary, you, you, not that you're second choice, Rosemary, but Ro Rosemary um, heads up CEF in Ireland with David, and they are the figurehead for all the missionaries that are going to be doing all the, the missionary work all across the island. So it would be good for Rosemary to stand as well as we gather around and think of the focus on summer evangelical mission across the globe. Let's do that now, guys. Come on, let's, let's stand. Whoever's going out, come on, Ben and Jack. Oh, you are standing. <laughs> good. Yep. Oh, Holly. You go. Holly McCullough is here somewhere. Oh, there you are. Holly's going to Philadelphia. Holly, shout out what you're going to be doing. Kids camp as well in Philadelphia as well. So she's heading out west also. So let's, Holly, you stand as well and we'll gather around. Holly, don't be shaking your head. It was Dave that, that he can come and pray for you now so he can. He, he has something special for you this morning. Okay, church, let's just, if you're not close to them, why don't you just where you are pray that the Holy Spirit would move through the people that are standing in the room and that the people, many young people and children would be drawn to the Father through Jesus, through the ministry that these folks are going to be doing. Let's, we'll just take a moment in silence just while we pray. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you this morning for the willingness to go. We thank you for the call upon each of these young people and young adults' lives, Lord, that are going to all parts of the world that will be touched by the, the truth of your word. And we say, come Holy Spirit and use each of these sending missionaries, Lord, would you use them to touch lives wherever they set foot. So come, Lord, and be with them. Protect them as they go. Give them health and strength. Lord, watch their journeying. Protect them as they travel. And we ask you, Lord, as well, that you would just um, come around their parents at home who are going to be missing them and uh, just help them not to worry or fear whatever is going on. Bring your peace into the households that are represented, Father. So we thank you for the sending, and we're expectant, Father God, for the reporting when we come back and hear in September what you have done through these people. So come, Lord Jesus. We thank you for them, and we say, move with them, Lord, as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Great. Dave, you're... You're bringing the word this morning. Um, tell you what, let's give all those folks a real round of applause. Because they've been, they've been saving, they've been preparing. It doesn't, these things don't, you're not paid to go. You raise money to go. So they've been doing many things. So yeah, it's great. All right, Dave, yeah. we'll pray for you, man. Father, just thank you for Dave this morning. We just asked you, Lord, that in, this, in these moments that you would just use him to speak directly to us. Father, just take whatever is on this page and bring it alive into each one of our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thanks, work. Good morning, everyone. 
Good to all be together. Um, uh, even our prayers where we've just been praying, it's very apt where we're going to be this morning uh, as we look about the nations and the call of the Lord upon our lives even, even for that. Um, we've been on this series, familiar, familiar to Fascinated. We're looking at the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. And this is the important part. It's not just that it's a historical information, but it's the reality. As Jesus turns up, every time Jesus turns up and encounters us, there's a moment of transformation. There's a moment of change. There's a moment of encounter. There's a moment of equipping. And as we look at some of these moments that Jesus has shown up, it's actually still for us today as he speaks to us and as he leads us. And where we're going to be, just let's just read briefly again, just where to last week, Phil brought an astounding teach. Um, the week before, Cheryl, we've had some incredible teachers of people who have spoken as well on the stage over the last number of weeks. Cheryl, two weeks ago, spoke in this passage that I'm beginning with today in Acts chapter 1. Uh, where we look about the call of Jesus to be his witnesses. And so let's just take just a short moment just to read this together. And so Holy Spirit, we just pray that as we open the word, would you speak to us afresh? Give us ears to hear what you are saying this morning. In Jesus' name. This is what it says in Acts chapter 1. After his suffering, um, he presented himself to them. This is Jesus. He presented himself to them. Uh, and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Sorry, I'm just starting my timer here as I get into this. Present, uh, many pr uh, proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before them, or before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, listen to the truth of these words, this same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. He is returning. He is coming back to us. And yet in this moment between resurrection and his return, there's a, there's a mission, there's a command, there's a charge that is spoken over all of us. And in other parts of scriptures, this is what's known as the Great Commission. These are the words that Jesus says. It's similar to this in Matthew's gospel. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all these things that I've commanded you. And surely... I am with you to the very end of the age for all those who are going on mission this summer, all the people we just prayed for. This is the truth that Jesus speaks. I am with you. Carl, I'm just seeing you as well. Whenever you go and over this next while, he is with you in these moments. And in this passage we looked at this morning as well, Jesus has said this, you will be my witnesses not just to the nation, but to the very end of the age. And it caught me actually a couple of weeks ago as Cheryl spoke, man, what an incredible teach she brought that day, Cheryl Bailey. And it was Cheryl spoke about the call to go from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. She spoke about how we can look at that in a geographical context, which we so easily could do and try to focus on. But yet what she was saying, and it's really important for us, even as we look at this call to the ends of the earth, to the ears and to the listeners, all who were standing around him, these places, it wasn't just about a geographical place, but it took on a fresh meaning. Cheryl, last time she was with us, just referred to this. Jerusalem spoke about a place of fear. Judea spoke about a place of rejection. Samaria spoke about a place of prejudice. And yet what Jesus says is that in the midst of this, in the midst of all these things that we face, this is the call, you will be my witness. Because here's the truth, we are the church. We're the church of Jesus Christ. And each time, as I said, Jesus turns up to encounter us, it's for this. 
It's because of the mission and the mandate that he's placed, the call that he's placed upon all of our lives, that we would be the ones that would continue and carry the message that he speaks. This is the call that has always been and always will be. If you want to know what I want, what I have to do with my life, God, what do you want me to do with my life? There can be so many different varied things you might do personally, but the call that is upon us all specifically is this, make disciples. The call that is upon us all specifically is this, be my witnesses. And where Jesus speaks, and this is where we look at this today, he says, make disciples of all nations, and be my witnesses to the very ends of the earth. And firstly, what I want to do for, for 10 minutes, I'm going to try and, I don't want to rush this, but I want to, it's really important as elders at the start of the year, it just happened that it's coincided. You, you think that the Holy Spirit just orchestrates a lot of these things. But today, we hadn't actually planned it. Today, I was going to be speaking in this passage onto the ends of the earth. But what we had decided as elders, we had used this date, and it's just that it's fallen in this day. We had decided that as, as elders for our church, many of you, which you've, you've done today, you give faithfully into the house every week with your tithes and your offerings. And much of what we do with that money can sometimes be an unknown. And yet, as, as we try to be faithful, we try to faithfully steward the money that God brings into the house today, just for a short while, I want to update you about some of our mission partners with some of the monies that we use. And today, what I'm going to do is, from a, in a global context, I want to inform you and update you how the money is being used and to further the kingdom of God and the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what it's about. It's not just to help people out in life. It's to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and to further his kingdom. And so today, just for 10 minutes, I want to update you with this. In October, we're going to be taking another Sunday just in a similar way to update you how we do that and with our local mission partners as well. But Today, we're talking about the nations. We've been praying for people as they go to the nations. This is the call of Jesus. Go and make disciples of all nations. You'll be my witnesses to the very ends of the earth. And we're blessed as a church to partner with some amazing people who actually are outworking this call as a church. This is how we join in. This is how we partner with this. We join prayerfully. We join in by supporting those on the ground. And also, and this is where today we're going to be just giving you some information about this as well, also by our, our going. Today as we finish and as we pray at the end of this, this is my prayer that actually the Holy Spirit is going to deposit something in some people's minds and in some people's hearts today where actually there's a specific call in your life to go. For some of you, maybe you've heard this before, you've heard God speak to you about this before, you've, you've felt the nudge of the Holy Spirit in your life before, but today you're going to hear it afresh a call on your life to go. And this is my prayer that we'd be sensitive to hear what the Spirit is saying. With our mission partners, one of the first people that I just want to, so let's just take 10 minutes as we go through this. One of the first people, we have a couple of videos just to show on this as well. But one of the first people just for you to hear about today is our good friend, Kingsley Armstrong. Many of you know Kingsley and his wife, Kath. Kingsley heads up this organization, J16, the Joshua Project. For years, Kingsley has been faithfully just preaching and declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ, seeing people saved, transformed, their lives changed, encouraging and countering leaders. This all stemmed from the call that's in the book of Joshua in chapter 1, to be courageous, to go across and to take possession of the land. And Kingsley just outworks us faithfully. Kingsley's one of those people that we give to every month. And we sow into his ministry in a similar sense as Kingsley. It's similar to what he does, and this is why I put them together. But Billy Kennedy, Billy, who is part of Pioneer Network, for years we supported them as an organization, and yet we've changed our giving now just to Pioneer International. This is something that Billy, in a personal way, is a photo of him and his wife, Caroline. But Billy, in a personal way, what he is doing, the purpose of of Pioneer International is to help put architecture and to bring shape to small churches in deprived areas around the, the globe, mainly in Africa and in Asia. And again, similar to some of the things Kingsley's doing, while there's a declaration of the gospel, it's building leaders and financially sustaining pastors and their families. Another one who's just no stranger to us, one of the most incredible men is this man, Pastor Richard, Pastor Richard Lumba from Uganda. This is his wife Florence with him. This man is amazing. 
many of the people in our church family who have been out in Uganda, in Jandira, our youth, our young people are all going there. We will next year as part of a mission. There's, it's, been, it's in the pipeline. There's, there's plans that are afoot for this that are going to go out and spend time in Jandira. But Richard, he runs a church in Jandira, and he built a school uh, with, in connection with Fields of Life called Source of Light Primary School. He runs an orphanage there. He, he runs the church in Jandira. I and mean, as a church family, we partnered with him over the years. Many of us were part of the teams that were there. And yet, um, off the back of one of the first couple of teams, many of you know Alan Emerson, uh, who leads with us and is one of the leaders in Portadown. What happened off the back of one of the teams was that sadly, Alan's wife, Lindsay, who's young at that stage, she, she passed away. She had a real heart for the area. And what we did was that as, as a church family and together mainly with Alan and his family, we, we wanted to, to build something in Lindsay's memory. She had a real heart for this area in Jandira. And so because they only had primary school education provision, they did no secondary school provision at all. We built a secondary school called Light for All High School. Many of you were part of the teams out there. I think I fell through a bit of scaffolding one of the years uh, as, we, as we tried to build this. I'm telling my mom's sitting here and I just realized I might not have told her that. Um, but I remember one of the years just being, it's just incredible and blessing just to be part of this. And Pastor Richard is just faithfully just sowing. And even in their church, they're now church planting around the area in, in Uganda as well. Much of our Our monies are given and are sent over towards Uganda. We have teams that we're trying to send out as well. And then before we show this next video, this next partner, Brad and Pam Sandelius, you'll see their images in the the video as they come up. With this one, it's a bit more... um, so on the right, you have a flag of India. Several years ago, as a a church leadership, we really felt... uh, we really felt the invitation of God and I suppose the call of God upon us. We recognize around the world there are many people who are part of unreached people groups. And yet Jesus said that the gospel would be preached to all nations. We recognize that there are many people who have not heard the good news of Jesus Christ because of persecution or because it hasn't been proclaimed in their country. And so what we did was we joined with another organization um, which partners with persecuted um, believers particularly in these unreached people groups. And through that, we got connection with Brad and Pam. We adopted an unreached people group to ourselves as a church family, as a church body in India. And so we sent teams out there. We support them financially. About four years ago, this is why the flag's on the left, about four years ago, Brad and Pam got displaced from India. The government actually put a lot of foreigners out of the country. And so they were were made to leave. And what they did was strategically they moved to one of the uh, countries nearby. So they're in the UAE. And they've been there for four years. They are faithfully preaching the gospel. They are making disciples, running lots of discipleship programs in that area. And yet the reason why they're there is that so that they can still go back under tourist visas, get back into India. They're still faithfully uh, plugging into everything that's there. We are hoping of... I do a Zoom call with Brad every two months. We meet and we connect. And as part of our last conversations, we're, we're looking again in 2024 by trying to get a team back to India, which we'll be giving information about. And so as part of our go, this could be a call for some of you today. We're going to watch a video. You can stop listening to me for a couple of minutes. Brad and Pam have sent a message and a greeting to us as a church family. So let's watch the screen. Phil, if we could just show Brad and Pam's family our video. Hello, Emmanuel. We're so glad to be partnering with you. Um, I'm Pam and this is Brad Sandelius and we have two kids, Isabel and Samuel. And uh, we just want to thank you for just your prayers. And when you have spent time visiting us um, when we were living in India, and now we are in the United Arab Emirates. It's been our fourth year here and serving among the South Asians. So we really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, and God has been doing some amazing things here uh, in the UAE. Uh, over the last uh, eight to 10 months, uh, been, been able to do four uh, discipleship making movement trainings, which have led to uh, many new Discovery Bible studies being started among South Asians. Last week uh, in the Emirate of Fujairah, we start the the eleventh uh, Discovery Bible study was started. So we are so thankful for what God is doing. We're thankful for your partnership with us uh, in the gospel here in the UAE, 
And uh, yeah, we're just, we just feel so blessed and encouraged. And hopefully one day soon we'll be able to, to see you all in person, uh, Lord willing. So thank you and God bless you. So Brad and Pam were with us a number of years back and uh, God willing, well, they say that we'd be back in Northern Ireland at some point and can connect with us in person, but we want you to see them, become familiar with them so you can be praying for them. Another one of the organizations which we, we tie in with is uh, the Leprosy Mission in Northern Ireland. Phil, is the screens on there? Um, so the Leprosy Mission in Northern Ireland, um, Joanne Briggs from our church. Also, I know this is saying Northern Ireland. We're talking about global stuff, Dave, but like this is right across the world. What, what is happening is with the Leprosy Mission, the heart and the, the purpose of this is to see leprosy just eradicated in our time. This is one of the calls of Jesus. We see him curing and cleaning, cleansing and healing lepers in the Gospels. And this is part of the mission and the mandate of the leprosy mission. And so this is one of our partners that we partner with. Another great man is this man, Pastor Jacob. Um, this is uh, Pastor Jacob we see on the screen with one of the orphans that he helps support. In February 2006, I was speaking to Phil about this yesterday, but in February 2006, Phil and Jill... Uh, first connected with Pastor Jacob in India. This was just, Phil was just reflecting this yesterday. This was just a few weeks just before Jill actually passed away. They went out there. And so there's a massive part of just Phil's heart here. And yet Phil's just reflection on saying, I've just never, ever met a man like this. I've never met a man like this just in terms of his passion and his commitment just to the work of God in his life. And here's some of the things. Let me read this with, through this man and through the organization. They've established over 35 orphanages with over 6,500 children. They run chicken farms. They've established schools providing educational pathways. They provide medical care for lepers. Our money now pays for one of those leper colonies, but they provide medical care for lepers in 46 leper colonies. And again, that's what our money's going to. They run medical clinics. clinics. They run discipleship programs. Listen to this. This is the passion and the commitment of this man in, in his own nation. Through the training and equipping of men and women, and releasing them as pastors in the country. They release 60 to 80 pastors every three months. <laughs> their commitment to this. This is what these people are doing because they've heard the call of God on their lives and they're saying, I'm going for it. I'm not holding back, Jesus. I'm giving everything to follow you. I'm giving every part of my life. And Phil told me another story. One of the pastors that he trained was a man called Daniel. And this man, because of his love and devotion to Jesus, was actually beaten by the people in his village. He was beaten almost within an inch of his life. He nearly died. And what happened a short time after that, in the village, there was a fire in the village and all the houses were destroyed in this village area. As a church family, we, um, they contacted us and we gifted, we, I think we sent a thousand pound out to them. With this money, listen to what they're able to do. With this money, they rebuilt all the homes in the village. And what happened off the back is like Phil was telling me this yesterday with just a real laugh and a joy as we were discussing this. What happened is off the back of them rebuilding this, the whole village turned to Christ. The whole village through this one man because of his passion and his commitment and through the enthusiasm and because of this one man and through the start of it, through Jacob's life, suddenly they're seeing the gospel spreading in India. And here's the reason why. Here's the reason why, because somebody heard the words of Jesus in this, you will be my witness. It's much more than just turning up the church and just going through the motions. It's the reality of what it is to be a believer. It's the reality of what it is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You will be my witnesses. Pastor Jacob just treats it really practically. There's other, just so you're aware, there's other um, People, other organizations which we're desiring to partner with, we have began conversations again as elders. We're going to hopefully come September be recommencing our support of Ars Cambodia. Um, we're going to be sewing into a network and agency in Israel. We are going to be supporting Drew and Mary at Caldwell in Lebanon, who many of you have met. And just briefly, there's a video from Drew and Mary, which I'm going to let you just watch on the screen. Hi, we are Drew and Mary, and we've been living in the Middle East for the last 14 years. We have three daughters, Layla, who's 13, Sophia, who's 11, and Hope, who is nine. Originally, we moved here to the Middle East because we felt like we had a, a vision, a call from God, that God wanted to raise up 
uh, movements of believers coming to faith, like in the book of Acts, in the Arab world, in our generation. And it's our joy in faith to continue to trust God all these years later for that promise. And to be direct, we recognize that we are not the leaders of the church God is raising up in the Middle East, but our Arab friends are. And that our role is to, to spiritually mother and father them, to coach them, to support them, uh, to serve them, to help lead them into the kingdom. But our, our primary vision is that these Arab leaders are going to take the gospel to their own people, and to their own communities. And praise God, we're seeing the beginning of that dream unfold. So in this season, that looks a lot like uh, Drew doing trainings for a, a network of widows and women of Syrian refugees. It looks like me working with women who, after the explosion, um, we've been going deeper and deeper, and they're doing uh, forgiveness and trauma healing Bible studies in their community. Both Drew and I are now teaching um, Muslim young people and so we're, we're constantly finding ourselves in positions of mothering and fathering uh, these young people and it also looks like um, I've been going to Turkey as in a response to the earthquake and uh, the, the hearts are so hungry for Jesus, for kingdom, for healing, um, and there's there's really no workers. So it's been a beautiful to be able to respond in this moment. So thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for carrying us. Uh, we we really love you guys. Drew, Drew and Mary are just the most amazing couple, and when you're around them, they're, they're just an inspiration. Another one of the organizations I forgot to mention was Open Doors, supporting the persecuted church around the world. We sow into them monthly as well. All of this to say, listen, this is more than just an information thing. We just want you to catch the heart of this. People here hearing the words of God, hearing the words of Jesus, go and make disciples of all the nations. Be my witnesses to the ends of the earth or people here are hearing this. And the reality is, and this is one of the words that I felt actually the Lord speak to me um, was during the last year. Uh, obviously, the call upon Abraham was that he was to be a father of many nations. One of the things I felt, that maybe in a personal sense, but I feel for us that there's something about being a father to the nations. The nations are actually on our doorstep. The nations are, yes, there's the going sense of it, but the nations are around us. And the beautiful thing is that we have people in our church family with today. This is our global partners. There are people here engaging with the nations around us, and it's almost one of the ones that just goes unnoticed. And so, Barbara, I see her sitting here at the front. Sylvia, Julie. Harold, many of the guys that are here, and we're going to pray for you in a little second, they were on the English lessons. This can almost be one of the, the, those environments that just goes unnoticed faithfully every Tuesday night. Listen to some of these stats. Listen, don't switch off on your Listen to some of these stats. 158 students registered for the English lessons that run here every Tuesday night. Average attendance is about 34 per week. The students came from 21 countries. Here's a list of all the different nations that come into our building that are present here with us. This is where Jesus says, you will be my witnesses, remember? He said, you'll be my witnesses. And this is how the guys are witnessing, demonstrating the love of God practically by teaching them English. They're desperate for this. Our volunteers are from here in Emmanuel Lurgan, Emmanuel Porter, and I'm from Moyer Baptist. While we ran the Alpha course, they ran it with a group from there as well. They're doing a follow-up program. They're teaching them grow. Julie Hewitt was actually reflecting this with me during the week as well. She's, she's teaching and growing, obviously, because... I just use really big language, and we all use big language in church. And what she's saying, they're actually having to try and distill down all the language. What's some of these religious words? How do you teach it in that context to them? And so she was saying, Dave, I'm trying to work out how to explain righteousness in Bulgarian. <laughs> Whatever these things might be, there's, there's a reflection of it. And um, um, Barbara was reflecting this. They, they brought some of the guys, some from Ukraine, one from Syria. They brought them yesterday. This is a demonstration practically of the love of God. They brought them that just, since they've, they've came here, they've never been by the sea since they've been here. And yesterday, some of the guys from our church brought them to the seaside. Some from Ukraine, some from Syria, demonstrating the love of God. Because you know why? They've heard the call of Jesus. You will be my witness. And this is how they're out working it. Do you see the simplicity of it? It's not just a standing on the corner and shouting and declaring the verses from Scripture in the top of your head. You will be my witnesses, demonstrating the love of God and making known the love of the Father who we've been celebrating in this room this morning. You will be my witnesses. This is the call that's upon us all. One of the, I don't know if she's here in the room, but one of the other people is Sylvia. Is Sylvia in the room? Where is she? There she is. Hello, Sylvia and Harold. How are you doing? 
these guys are just unsung heroes. Like, total heroes. Everybody's involved with this, and yet, Sylvia, this, you didn't write this, but some of the guys from the English Nations wrote this. Sylvia has an incredible ministry to the nations. Tuesday night English classes, classes for Syrians applying for citizenship, Alpha for English learners, helping Ukrainian students in Jamor High School, hosting, visiting foreign students in her home, just nonstop with it. And all because, again, they've heard and taken seriously the call of Jesus. You will be my witness. <laughs> Today, Holly, come up a wee second, will you? I'm going to, I had other things, but we'll leave it. This, this is the call today. You see, let me just share, share one verse. You see, in our series, From Familiar to Fascinated, it's, it's lovely to hear the stories. It's lovely to be moved. It's lovely to be inspired. But guys, it has to mean something. It has to mean something that involves change. It has to mean something that actually causes us to be people that step out. And here's one of the things that I just feel today in terms of this call to the ends of the earth. Here's... I don't even worry about this. This was, in their understanding, this is what I was trying to say through this, to the people that heard Jesus say, bring it to the ends of the earth. There was no limits or boundaries with us. They, they had no understanding there were, in terms of onto what. At this stage, like for many years, they thought the earth was flat, for goodness sake. They didn't know onto what. They had no understanding. Columbus hadn't discovered America, all these sorts of things. So when Jesus says, carry it to the ends of the earth, in their heads, it's onto what. There was no limit or there was no boundary to it. And so what happens is when Jesus actually calls us to be those that bring it to the ends of the earth, yes, it could mean, and this is what I want to pray as Holly leads us, it might mean that for some of us there could be a nudge actually the Holy Spirit brings into your life that actually there is a call to go. There is a call to go to the nations. There is a call actually to engage in a similar way to what the guys are doing. But yeah, the call to the nations was much more similar to what Cheryl said before. It's more than just a geographical context. It speaks about stepping into the unknown. It speaks about stepping into a place without borders. What so easily happens is from our upbringings and from our traditions, we so easily place the borders around our thinking and the boundaries around our thinking. God, I'm willing to go this far, but no more. Abraham, one of the heroes of faith, is what it says in Hebrews 11. He went without knowing where he was going. And the passage we read earlier, in Acts 1, the disciples are coming. They have the boundary already made up. Abraham had a boundary as well. He was called to be a father, and yet the boundary in his head was, I'm really old. <laughs> My wife's barren. This is impossible. This was the boundary that was in his head, and yet God called him to step beyond the boundary that was in his mind and to live by faith. What was happening here with the disciples? They were saying to Jesus, oh, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel the way that we are expecting it? the way our traditions and the boundaries have told us this is going to be. And yet Jesus says these words, and this is what I want you to hear this morning. It is not for you to know. Hear these words this morning. It is not for you to know everything. This is the excitement of being part of the journey with Jesus and the part of faith. Sometimes he calls us to step out of the boat. He calls us into things. And what it means is that we have to push beyond the boundaries that sometimes we've placed even within our own minds. The call to the ends of the earth is to step into the unknown. It's a step to push beyond those boundaries. And this is what I feel at the end of this series from the familiar to fascinating. This is when we go beyond the familiarity of things and we actually get to experience him in his wonder. Listen, I know this in my life. In those moments when I've engaged in many different nations around the world, each time when I've stepped into it and I've pushed through some of those things that have been awkward, when I go there, I've met him. I've experienced him. He's already there. He's already at work. And I experience it in the most fascinating and wonderful of ways. His kingdom being established and built. And this is a call that's upon our lives. Will you take this even to the places it feels like it's an unknown? Some of those things that might feel uncomfortable for you. Some of those things that sometimes in your head you want to have it all worked out before you go. Jesus says, no. I'm calling you into the unknown to push beyond the boundaries of this. Carl, I'm going to you again. Sorry, I'm being drawn to you. You don't know what you're going to be facing during those months as you go, but I know this. He is with you. For all the people that are going on mission this summer in all the different places, you don't know all the different things you'll experience, but I know this. He is with you. He's already there. 
You're going to be able to experience him in the wonder of this. And this is where the fascination of it becomes real. And what I would love us to do, just as we finish, I'm going to ask Holly just to lead us in this song, Oceans, in the call of this, just that we're stepping out. As we come to the end of the series, as we start into the new season of summer, it's really easy to just let this all drop. But yet this is the call of the Lord upon us. Are you willing to trust me? As he holds out his hand to us as a good father who loves us and says, are you willing to trust me? Will you come with me? I'm going to bring you to places you might not have never been before. It might not feel comfortable. It might not feel familiar for you, but trust me. Will you come with me? So let's stand with me this morning, will you? And Holly's going to just lead us just briefly in this, and then we're, I'll pray for a couple of people as we close. Father, I pray that over the room this morning, God, that you would just release within us, God, Lord, just deposit just a measure of faith that would just be willing, God, to just move and push beyond the borders, borders that we've established ourselves, borders in our own minds, in our own hearts. God, I pray that we would be a people, God, that would be willing to follow and to go wherever, whenever, however, God, you call us to be, Lord, that we would be abandoned to you and to your ways. 
God, I pray, Lord, over people in the room this morning who maybe just there's a growing sense, God, even over the word specifically to the nations, God, that there's something specific that you've been planting and depositing in hearts. God, I just pray, Lord, that whatever is there, Lord, that you would grow it, God, at the right time and in the right way. And yet, God, over all of our lives, God, we recognize, God, and we hear the words of you this morning, Jesus. Be my witnesses. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would use us, God, this week, God, this summer, God, as we look ahead to everything. We just pray, Lord, that you would use us all for the glory of your name, Jesus. I pray that we would be a witness and a testimony of you and your goodness and your kingdom. And so we just pray an invitation. God, your kingdom come. Your will be done in and through our lives, we pray. We love you, Father, and this day we recognize you as the one that we love above every other name. And so we just said, this is all for the glory of your name alone. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Holly. Thank you, everyone, for this morning. You can go and grab your kids. Happy Father's Day again to all the men in the room. Be blessed in everything that you're doing. And enjoy the rest of your day.